have to start drawing a line that if my cup is not full i'll not be able to pour to my mm. family to my kids you know women body are designed in such a way mm. by almighty that you know there are signs and the best sign that you get is hi guys welcome back to the fat kid show jahan hum karenge gapshap ekdam hi unfiltered यू नो कुछ टाइम पहले हार्मोनल इम्बैलेंस स्पेसिफिकली थायरॉयड की वजह से मेरी एनर्जी लेवल इतनी लो रहती थी कि मैं दोपहर को दो बजे ही जाके सो जाती थी या सैटरडे संडे को मैं सिर्फ सोते रहती थी और वेट गेन तो दिख ही रहा है आपको इसीलिए चैनल का नाम भी फैट किट शो रख दिया बट ये सब चीज़ों को मैंने इतना ज़्यादा इग्नोर किया है अनटिल रिसेंटली एंड वेन आई विजिट एज अ डॉक्टर तो मुझे पता चला कि यह थायरॉयड का प्रॉब्लम है हाइपोथायरॉयडिज़म so I thought and when I discussed this with a lot of friends they said that okay हमें हाँ, भी hormonal issue काफ़ी है so I thought इट बी ग्रेट टू कॉल इन अ डॉक्टर हु इज़ एन आयुर्वेदिक एक्सपर्ट एंड ऑल्सो एन कपिंग एक्सपर्ट एंड शी स्पेशलाइज इन वीमेंस हेल्थ आज के एपिसोड के लिए मैं थोड़ा एक्साइटेड हूँ बिकॉज लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू डॉक्टर तहसीन मलिक शी इज़ एन आयुर्वेदा एंड कपिंग एक्सपर्ट Now she's been practicing for over 18 years and personally she's been my cupping doctor as well. She has practiced in UAE, UK and India. And she specializes in holistic medicine for women health. I am super excited because ever since I have turned 30, meri health aur hormone ki to band baj chuki hai literally. So I welcome you Dr. Tehsin. Dr. Uh- Tehsin, welcome to the Fat Kid show. and i'm really excited to have this conversation with you thank you so much reshma for having me and even i'm so excited um this is one of my first podcast so and it's uh, it feels I so good i hope you have fun <laughs> it will we'll, be, we'll, be a good we'll conversation yes. to educate lot of people absolutely because you know talking about this hormonal imbalance no matter how much knowledge you get it's always less yes yes yeah. yes and there are lot of uh, you know misconceptions that are going around Correct. and uh, it will be great you know if i could at least make some difference to Definitely. the uh, you know to the lives of people yeah. especially women yeah yes you know yes. you are one of the most calm doctor who is not at all shy in sharing information i ask her one question and then she'll give me detail of like 1000 lines <laughs> i'm like doctor bas ho gaya aaj ke liye but uh, yeah so doctor yes. how does i i i know you practice islam as well okay and how does ayurveda and islam align together okay so uh, reshma this is the question that i've been asked many times and definitely and uh, you know this is one of the hinge that i have to actually uh, overpass myself uh, but uh, you know ayurveda is a medicine it's a science okay and wherever it coincides with the with the principles of islam that is where we accept it if it does not go beyond or it it does not oppose the principles of islam uh i think uh, you know there is no harm because you know each science like for example if you take allopathy or homeopathy you know each one is derived from a civilization correct right correct, it is correct. it is not only come from islamic correct. civilization so when you accept it as a science correct then it is not uh, like you know there is no uh, no conflict correct. but when you are also uh, you know mixing the spirituality mm. aspect and all that that's where the conflict happens so basically you're trying to say that, that we can draw a line between yes, ayurvedic absolutely. and islam yes 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah. that's that's there and then uh, you know we we accept the scientific part of ayurveda Correct. and uh, you know we the the part that we don't agree with hmm. we leave it we leave it yeah yeah, yeah. this Fair is a very enough. common practice amongst uh, you know when you are uh, building a society that's hmm. based on different uh, uh, cultures and this thing so it, it, it actually mixes well yeah makes yeah. sense it's a yeah. good insight because not lot of um, islam practitioners are into ayurvedic as well mm-hmm. as far as i knew until i met you honestly yes yes so it's a good insight to know how we can draw that mm-hmm. line in between for that matter if you take ayurveda or you take unani medicine most of the herbs that we are using and most of the principles that we are following are similar mm-hmm. but uh, you know we we when we when it comes to unani medicine we treat it as Correct. more uh, you know more palatable correct, for correct, muslims correct. however ayurveda there is a bit of um, uh, you know people have a bit of a discomfort true, or true. this thing but i don't think uh, that you know ayurveda as a science 
goes against correct uh, islam correct. any correct. principles of okay. islam let's jump directly into our main topic that's on women's health yes you know i feel 100% of your patients are w- women so no not 100 okay 80% <laughs> I would 80% say, i would say yeah we'll keep it between 80 to 90% okay, but yeah we my, my so what is the most common issue diagnosis hormonal imbalance whatever you call is seen in women okay so uh, you know if you wake me up in the middle of the night and even ask me i would say is pcos okay mm-hmm. polycystic ovarian syndrome um or the other word you can say is hormonal imbalance Correct. relate and pcos is a huge umbrella hmm. okay it it covers different hormonal imbalances like insulin resistance like uh, you know hyperandrogenism where hmm. there is a uh, more hair growth hmm. on face and body Correct. there is uh, infertility hmm. that is always related to pcos ovulation disorder hmm. thi- thyroid at some level also coincides with Correct. pcos prolactin Correct. imbalance so that it's a huge umbrella Correct. and when i see patients most of them they have some or the other kind of hormonal imbalance mm-hmm. that actually translates into a condition so mm-hmm. what we what we feel is when you are treating this hormonal mm-hmm. imbalance you are actually helping them to reverse the condition Correct. and that's where we get positive Correct. results but you know doctor while growing up i don't know if it is because there was no social media as such for me or is it that the number of pcos patients are increasing what is the reality was that the lack of awareness back in the days or is it that actually because of the lifestyle that we are living right now is the pcos increasing in women reshma it's both okay mm. i would say it's both but the second uh, reason that mm. you said mm. is more, uh, more dominant huh. okay because uh, obviously there was a lack of awareness Correct. Correct. there was no social media but then the the number of patients if you mm. look uh 10 to 15 mm. years from now they were much less, less but of because of the the kind of lifestyle, lifestyle we live and you know the life has become easier mm. less physical activity the kind of foods mm. we are able to eat um it's a blessing but then it uh, it also comes with uh this kind of uh, you know uh, problems attached to it so i would say that it's uh, both yeah it's both so uh, i'm talking about the thyroid issue it is also common right like right now lot of women are also facing with thyroid and i am one of them i recently got treated alhamdulillah but the uh-huh. medicines are still on yeah but uh, how how does that and pcos relate to okay so thyroid in my experience what i have mm-hmm. seen there are three factors that are very much important when you are talking at a, at the thyroid health mm-hmm. one is the nutrition Correct. obviously and uh, lifestyle of course second it's the stress hmm. because reshma earlier you know the women were more confined to homes they didn't have so much yes. of stress related to uh, like you know uh, workplace and profession mm-hmm. and everything now that more and more women mm-hmm. are getting into jobs corporates mm-hmm. work uh, so it becomes the stress also cause pcos yes mm-hmm. yes it 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 I don't say it is a cause but mm. it's a trigger of course it's, it's a, a trigger, trigger. Mm. it's it can be a trigger for PCOS so I what I've seen is some women are more susceptible or they carry genes that can translate into PCOS some are more susceptible to thyroid mm. now the the trigger point can be stress. stress so for one women it will actually translate to PCOS the oh. other women it can go to thyroid, thyroid. so it, it it is you know different bodies Correct. different uh, kind of challenges Reaction. they will have yes i want to ask that even with PCOS and thyroid is there any particular age that it can get detected or it can start or it can trigger so uh, there is no such age i would say reshma but yeah um, after menarche hmm. after you attend your periods you yes. know we usually give a female 2 years of gap because their reproductive system is developing, developing. so it is not the right time to diagnose or put a label but yes if if the conditions or the symptoms are very severe mm. then we can start the diagnosis from there itself but it can also uh, result into like um, when when they they start attending like you know 18 years of age or more mm. like adulthood i mm. would say mm. that's when uh, this kind of conditions are more dominant Correct. and 
for some it they manifest during uh, their pregnancy when mm. they are carrying mm. a baby thyroid you know suddenly it manifests mm. some have high blood sugar levels suddenly mm. manifesting so there is no such age Correct. it is like very specific to each person coming back to the stress topic now there are people like me who really doesn't stress as much okay i'm an overthinker but i don't stress as such so is there any subconscious stress that can also trigger your hormonal imbalance so stress is not about only like you know being anxious or being hmm. uh, being um, actively stressed hmm. Hmm. Uh, it can be your sleep correct your body's circadian cycle mm. it can be physical stress in mm. terms of you know when you are working you are not focusing on your eating time huh. your your uh, water intake correct. so that is a physical stress to the body okay the mental stress is related to like you have so much uh, uh, stress related to work mm. that I, even if you are home subconsciously yeah, yeah. it is going in at the back uh, of your mind i have to finish this product there is a yeah. deadline yeah. but i also have to finish cooking correct. so so you know it's it's always there is a tug of war bit wow. going on in your mind and that is the subconscious stress that will also add on to the condition. then what is your recommendation on me being into corporate world having my own hobby managing house cooking what do you recommend to a woman in in what terms and how can she manage stress for a longer term so uh, i i reshma i always tell my patients fill your cup first you know you uh, women mm. you know usually by nature is such mm. that she she is by nature multitasking you but know but doctor this yes. cannot be done i've seen my mom give up her life for family yes, and you know yes, it's difficult yes i understand i understand brain. because that is how we are being raised yeah, this yeah. is how we are subconsciously Correct. trained Correct. okay but you have to understand you have to start drawing a line that if my cup is not full i'll not be able to pour to my mm. family to my kids you know mm. so you have to understand that i have to prioritize myself mm. uh, not over the family but yeah at least you keep it mm. uh, yourself at the same yeah. level of uh, others yeah. you know yeah. so this is this Do is these sipping teas like green tea chamomile tea help you with stress not with stress yeah but you know what I happens is that when we are stressed we uh, when we are stressed we we indulge into stressful eating hmm. or you know any uh, like you know impulsive eating yes, yes. so when sugar. you are yeah sugar cravings hmm. so when you are sipping this kind of herbal tree, uh, teas hmm. that actually help you to uh, like you know uh, navigate from this kind of cravings yeah. so this is uh, this is how and yeah this kind of t- uh, teas they also help you in improving your body's metabolism Correct. so so it's a, it's a good uh, it's habit to you habit. yeah rather than having lot of caffeine uh, i was which, just going to ask yes, you is coffee yes, yes, i yes. just took a espresso shot in yes, front of the yes, doctor before yes, the shoot yes, yes, yes. but yeah i'm a coffee is, addict i don't know i cannot just go and start drinking tea <laughs> oh. yeah yeah but you can does you caffeine can, caffeine affect your hormonal yes, imbalance yes, in some way does, or the other it does it really? does yes 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 it does because is you it know, like excessive caffeine or just having one cup of coffee is okay see one cup of coffee a day is not going to hurt you mm. as much but when you're having like three cups four cups and when you when you actually um uh connect coffee with your energy levels like you mm. know okay i'm i'm feeling down i need ah. a coffee so you need a caffeine shot to actually you know make you active or make you feel yeah. active by the you way you know coffee i had a friend of mine he used to take like caffeine shots all day okay mm-hmm. and then suddenly he started hallucinating in the yeah. daytime he literally had to take be taken to the doctor mm-hmm. that you know because of the coffee he is hallucinating that's no. the amount of caffeine he used to intake no so caffeine yeah. in in excessive amount is uh, very much uh, detrimental to mm-hmm. your health so if you're having uh, like a, a small um, uh, dose in mm-hmm. every day that's fine but if you don't go overboard Beyond. yeah overboard that what are your thoughts on sugar and hormonal imbalance <laughs> okay so insulin resistance hmm. which is um, like people in a layman language if i call it's called pre diabetic condition, condition right that has that has increased four fold hmm. in our uh, society especially uh, the uae society because uh, you know uh, sugar only doesn't come from tea coffee or desserts hmm. you get sugar from fruits to start with okay mm. which is natural sugar but mm. still it's a fructose it's a form Correct. of sugar you get sugar from carbs mm. 
right you get sugar from bakery items mm-hmm. having croissants having bread Correct. having rice yeah basically. so carbs basically white carbs are full of sugars Correct. okay and because our diet is always you know if you see our diet mostly it's dominant especially uh, mm. the asian diet is dominant with bread ha and roti. carbohydrate Haan. roti chawal you know agar roti chawal nahi khaya to there is no Kutvi meal khaya. yeah Haan. there is no meal for us so because of that you know the evidence or the incidence of mm. insulin resistance is increasing immensely so i would say that the best idea would be at least cutting down the sugar that you can see Mm-hmm. sugar in your teas or coffees mm-hmm. or uh, this thing and i never believe in eliminating i always believe in replacing okay when i say uh, reshma cut down the sugar i'm not telling cut down but at least replace it with healthy options what like? are the healthy options like jaggery Hmm. Okay, if you like jaggery, but wouldn't that pout. also spike your insulin level? It it will not spike your insulin level to uh to a level that a sugar would do to your hmm. body. Okay, yeah, jaggery will also uh, increase. But if you are doing it uh at an earlier stage hmm. where you are still not pre diabetic, jaggery is a very good option. Good option. Yes. The second thing is date powder. Hmm. date powder there is uh, there are syrup s- as well that de- date syrup or date powder mm. but you uh, and honey mm. of course honey but in this you have to be uh, very uh, vigilant that what you are taking is actually the, honey the that unadulterated the natural is, uh, not not sugar. the market honey it's i it's sweeter than sugar yes yes mm. yes not the market honey i would say the the you have to find the source of unadulterated natural honey um yamani sidar honey mm. is known to be yes. one of the best honey you know it uh, so you will have to do some homework yourself mm. for finding the substitute but always try to replace because when you try to eliminate na there will be mm. cravings and you will come back to more of it yeah so always try to replace or uh, some form of natural stevias are also mm. good not the market uh, you know those tablets that no, you get no, no 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 sugar free the natural form of stevia powder is also very good mm. as a dessert we we we've also seen erythritol powder as sugar sweetener yeah erythritol is uh, again uh, derived from sti- stevia, stevia but then you have to again see the adulteration and mm. uh, you know what person of erythritol is uh, added to Correct. it yes Correct. yes so like in terms of diet if you had to recommend a uh, stable diet which is also sustainable for throughout the day and mm. keeping your energy level high mm. what what would ideal diet be like see the ideal diet i always recommend my patient the first thing in the morning as they wake up within half an hour mm-hmm. they should drink something uh, which is warm, warm yeah. hot you know yeah. it, it actually helps to kick start your metabolism yeah. so whatever they say that eat drink nimbu wala pani is what you should really yeah, do yeah warm water warm if water. if nimbu suits your gut you know mm. because for different uh, in ayurveda again we have different prakruti different constitution mm. and for different constitution for different uh, ailments Then we have different dose. combinations like mm. you know so uh, but you can you can take like uh, for example if somebody has somebody has insulin resistance because mm. uh, methi cinnamon water Correct. is something that mm. we can recommend you can add a bit of lemon to it Uh, so that is something that you if would somebody s- has really hyperacidity stomach, then what what do you think they should drink in the morning? So hyperacidity, uh, we usually recommend to take uh, coriander seeds hmm. and zira water. Okay. So that helps uh, to empty stomach. So you empty. can like uh, yeah soak it in the water all night yeah. and drink it in the morning. Yeah, yeah, make a decoction of it, hmm. and you can take it. But like you know a- the thing is one thing with Ayurvedic is consistency. Mm-hmm. And you know somebody who like who doesn't have patience. Once the result, the next day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. See, uh, uh, this is not something I would say a part of Ayurveda. This correct. is a, this is a lifestyle, you Haan, know. Correct. So if you anything natural, yeah, this is this is, is a remedy. It's, it's like, like, a, like remedy, I'm telling you, know? you hmm. take a tea. You know, this is a tea kind of correct. a thing that you are taking correct. every morning. Correct. You don't have to go out buy a Haan. formula for that or yes, everything. Yes. yes. You know, uh, doctor, talking about all of this. Okay, I understand there are different type of hormonal issue, but the main thing is how will I? Okay, now with PCOS, I know that because if my periods are not on time, if they are not regular, I know that I might have hormonal imbalance. But for example, this is just talking about my personal case. I didn't have PCOS, thankfully, but uh, thyroid. For the last uh, um, uh, starting uh, in December of twenty twenty three. 
uh, you know my energy level kept on going down and the only thing i kept on blaming is my age okay i am not that old but i just kept on blaming my age and my weight but i am even at this weight i mean being obese i am super active person so with all of this i just kept on blaming that why what's happening what's happening and for the longest time i did not realize that it is my hormonal imbalance that's causing me a problem what are the signs as women we should look for when our health is deteriorating or if we have to see that if it is the time to see the doctor okay so as you said there are few general signs hmm. that you need to look for hmm. like the change in energy levels hmm. cravings a hmm. uh, sudden you feel there is a sudden uh, drop in your energy levels mm-hmm. like you know uh, when there is a, like you feel my sugar is going down or mm-hmm. i feel like you know tired sleepy. sleepy like and that is sudden you, you mm-hmm. know you are in the middle of day you feel that yeah. so that is something that needs um, a proper assessment that mm-hmm. we need to look into the second thing women body are designed in such a way mm-hmm. by almighty that you know there are signs and the best sign that you get is your period you know mm-hmm. if the first thing that women should look into is are my periods regular mm-hmm. okay second thing is there any sudden change in the pattern mm-hmm. like you know if you are menstruating for 7 days mm-hmm. suddenly you only menstruate for 4 days yeah. or you 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 keep spotting for 10 mm-hmm. to 12 days mm-hmm. so that this kind of uh, change in the pattern also should be uh you yeah. know taken care even of even if it is a heavy flow or a lighter heavy, flow yes yes thing, yes yeah. if the f- if the flow, flow is uh there is more clots in the flow mm. or the flow is free flowing um mm. the uh, the color of the menstrual flow also matters so these are few things that you know uh, which everybody can so do uh, you recommend like if suppose one month suddenly there is a change in my flow or something i should immediately consult a doctor not one month reshma but i would say at least consistently have a look because you know sometimes it would be because you have traveled because you have uh, you know uh, uh, maybe some stress some kind of eating you had some gas so you've been eating consistently this Correct. so that can also affect your menstruation for a period of time but mm. if if this change is consistent mm. over a period of 2 months or 3 months mm. then yes you must visit the doctor and the the i always tell my patient the earlier assessment and the earlier action we take the better it is too sure. so now let's talk about hijama yes um this is one of my favorite topics as well because um you are my doctor of course and apart from that i have seen a lot of difference when i do hijama especially when it comes to my digestion and even my lower back and my upper back as well so in terms of hijama it's a very uh, fast growing methodology i would say and a lot of people are adopting especially in india we didn't have as many hijama experts mm. in uae since very long arab culture does do hijama So tell me a little more about history of hijama and how did you get interested let me tell me about you as well like what was the interesting thing okay. point for you okay reshma so hijama is sunna okay mm-hmm. and let's connect it with the history first as you said that hijama is or i would say was not so common in mm-hmm. india however it's much practiced here in the arab, arab culture, culture because it comes uh, from the prophetic traditions Correct. right you know prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he always uh, like you know uh, had his trust in hijama yes. and he advised mm-hmm. uh, people to go for hijama mm-hmm. and the angel, like there is a hadith that you yes. know there is a cure in hijama and uh, you know you please prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you please advise your umma mm-hmm. to to practice hijama so that's how you know it is deeply rooted mm. in the uh, uae tradition or arabic tradition and people have been following mm. it for ages now uh, now there is a this is a very interesting thing that even ayurveda mm. has uh, there is a hijama Correct. so ayurveda we have five pillars of detoxification mm. we call it panch karma mm. and one of them is called rakt mokshana rakt okay. means blood, blood and mokshana means to get rid of freedom the impure blood mm. okay so and it was done much in a similar way like with the horn and everything oh, so yes. both in both the cultures hijama was practiced okay and i studied it during my graduation mm. but uh, you know it was not taught in a very elaborate way mm-hmm. 
and we just studied it as a subject mm. but when i came here and uh, i started seeing the results because mm. i was as i said i treat women with hormonal health Correct. and uh, you know imbalances so hijama is something that can be done uh, as an add on to any treatment Correct. you know he ja it is not like you have to limit so if the patient is taking allopathic mm-hmm. medicine they can go for hijama True. yeah there are precautions but they can go mm-hmm. if they are taking ayurvedic medicine homeopathic mm-hmm. medicine yunani hijama will always complement the treatment yeah. so what i did is i saw the results when my patients are taking hijama mm-hmm. alongside the uh, my medicine mm-hmm. and that's when you know i started studying hijama i took courses and mm-hmm. we we i i started um incorporating hijama in my practice and i mm. saw the results are very tremendous it's very yeah. quick it is quick it is yes, quick yes yes, yes 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 so you know even after a session i ask patient they say no we find this this yes, this yes. difference 100%. yes 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 but what is the science behind it how so, does it work how does a cupping therapy actually give you result and what is the science behind removing the blood clots because i know there are two types of hijama right yeah the, the wet, wet cupping and the, and the dry, dry cupping. cupping yes yes so tell me a little more science so hijama is, is wet cupping acha okay dry cupping is a, a different uh, where you know no, you for, work forever on... i thought hijama is both wet and dry <laughs> yes yeah. yes but hijama especially is wet wet cupping where we usually the first a uh, phase is that we work alongside your spine Correct. as i do for you and around around your spine there are nerves that mm. uh, you know originate and they go to the major organs mm. of our body like heart stomach uterus intestine mm. so when you are working on those roots mm. they will that will in turn affect that organ Okay, mm. so that's why we take spine as the um, uh, you know the main uh, root for the hijama, yeah. and then once we worked around spine, we we go to the organ. Is it that it increases your blood flow when you're creating that vacuum? Yes, yeah, so there are multiple benefits. Like first thing, when you put the cups, mm. you know it is actually activating those points and those organs. Then you put the scratches. Mm. The scratches are very superficial, mm. so that will actually. Uh, improve the blood flow mm. when we are doing the suction we are helping to uh, get rid of the toxins that mm. are clogging the tiny Correct. blood vessels mm. okay so we are eliminating that mm. we are improving the blood flow mm. the body thinks that there has been blood loss so it starts repairing the mm. organ where we are putting the cup so ah. if i put a cup for you for the heart mm. it will think that you know there is a blood flow on this root it will start the growth and repair yes. in that area so yes. hijama has uh, like you know very quick benefits mm-hmm. it's a very simple technique as yes. well but uh, really beneficial now um, you know whenever i do hijama or if i recommend somebody to do hijama the first question they ask me is how painful it is so now i have a good pain tolerance but not necessary everyone has that so have you ever faced an incident where like the patient couldn't just tolerate hijama and who who is somebody that they cannot do it okay um i would say this is the question mm-hmm. is it painful most of the time those who are doing it for the first time will always ask even if mm-hmm. their entire family is doing hijama yes. they'll come and the <laughs> first thing they ask us is, is it painful is it painful um the pain level i would compare to uh, is you know you the pain that you feel when you're getting waxed yes yeah or uh, a tiny like a scratch that mm. comes on the body because again we are working on your dermis that is the mm. uppermost level of the skin and the epidermis huh. so hijama in uh, it is we are not going deep hmm. so i mean a skilled doctor will never go deep of course of course okay so hijama is in that way is non painful huh. yes however different people have different tolerance hmm. and those who have very a uh, very sensitive hmm. skin and those who are very intolerant to pain also they are they are okay to, with they it. are o- yeah. okay because with because anyways it. when you create that vacuum mm. it kind of gives that numbness. numbing feeling yes yes, yes yes so when you put that cut usually we don't yeah, know we that yeah we call it a negative a... pressure huh. so when you create that negative pressure it actually numbs your skin for some 
period of so time. So basically the mechanism is that you're numbing towards the organ that you want to target. Yes, yes. The, those nerves you are numbing, you're, you're cutting it so that all the uh, impure blood gets drawn mm-hmm. and then the flow starts. I would not say all the impure blood because that's a misconception. It's uh. it's just the uh, the blood that is blocking, blocking. Because the tiny, in the tiny vessels, there is a blockage that Correct. is created. So when, you know, you clean the tiny uh, tubes around a bigger yes. tube, you know, the uh, blood, the blood yeah. flow anyways, and happy improve. cells yes. happy blood flowing yes, in the body yes yes yeah. and also when uh, when you are doing cupping a lot of hormonal changes, changes. take place in mm. your body your uh, endorphin levels will change oxytocin him um, you know even the corticosteroids mm. uh, so all these hormones uh, there is um, uh, you know there is a uh, like a harmonious secretion of yes, these hormones yes. in your body that makes you feel more active. Yeah, your more, body is happy. Yes, yes, yes. Something good has been yes, done to yes, me. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Uh, um, I want to know regarding hijama and hormonal imbalance. Like in general, if somebody suffering with PCOS, hmm. how do you treat that with hijama? Okay, so as I said that for for different organs, we have different target points okay so we are working on the points that are detoxifying first and then we are also working on the points that are related to the reproductive system okay the lower back points Hmm. uh, that we are working on that helps to um, you know uh, it helps to initiate uh, an organ response a repair so if uh, you know the uh, the the uterus is not responding somebody is not getting periods on time it helps to improve the blood circulation mm. to the uterus and that's how you know we can promote healthy okay. periods also when it comes to hormonal mm. imbalance there are some certain points in the head that we do yeah. because our hormone uh, cycle Mm. it starts from head it's Mm. not just here correct you know it starts from head Mm. your hypothalamus to your pituitary gland Mm. to again focusing on your thyroid and ovaries and all so there are certain points on head that also will kick start your hormonal cycle so um, in a way like hijama gives like an overhaul comprehensive um, harmony to your hormones mm. so for somebody who is doing it for the first time or they want to do it regularly what are your recommendations like when to do it is it every month okay so hijama are two types prophylactic and therapeutic when you come to prophylactic which is for wellness hmm. you know you don't have any issues but you want to do your hijama as a detox to keep yourself healthy and to prevent or you know any diseases in the body so if that's the case you can do it every three months six months mm-hmm. when you feel like you know mm-hmm. your body actually tells you when you start doing hijama mm-hmm. okay now this is the time i think i should go mm-hmm. for a session of hijama but when it comes to medical cupping which is therapeutic form of hijama mm-hmm. there is usually a routine that mm-hmm. we tell the patient <clears throat> uh, that you come for a session mm-hmm. every month for three consecutive months. Correct. They come every consecutive months. There is always a gap of four weeks between mm. the two sessions. After that, depending on the improvement in the condition, mm. we say, okay, now you can come every alternate month mm. or okay, it's okay. Now I can see you every three months or six mm. months, depending on the improvement. So mm. the doctor usually gives a plan for the medical cupping. Okay. And for the marks that leave after the hijama, how long does it stay and does it take time? And does it leave the marks, actual marks okay. in the body? Now, uh, Reshma, uh, there are most of the patients Mm. there will be no marks okay Uh, a doctor is skilled Mm. based on the fact that you know when they Mm. put the cut in how many days the marks Mm. are healed and as i said a doctor should know what layer you are scratching you are scratching only the superficial layers Mm. so it's like a scratch on the skin Mm. which should not leave Mm. a mark but there are certain conditions Certain skin conditions mm. where the skin cells do not heal in the way they should regenerate. Heal. Huh. Yeah, regenerate in the way they should regenerate. Correct. There are sometimes some errors where the doctor cup on the lesion itself. Mm. You're not, never supposed to cup on, for example, somebody has psoriasis or mm. eczema. No, but no doctor should cup on that area. Mm. It should be five centimeter away from mm. the lesion. So if Because of those errors, there can be marks sometimes Mm. and very importantly, patients who suffer from diabetes or insulin Mm. resistance, we have to be extra careful because that might 
you know uh, because of continuous cupping sessions mm-hmm. that might uh, leave certain marks. certain marks but usually application of uh, good moisturizing mm. uh, oils like olive mm. oil or any other natural oils mm. there should no is there be. any age when people can actually start hijama no there is no such age uh, we uh, i've done hijama for as uh, you know as young patients that's nine years okay okay and uh i've also done for uh like uh, you know older people mm. as 80 or 85 mm-hmm. years also so there is no such age but there are certain conditions that a doctor needs to assess mm-hmm. like if they are on any medications mm-hmm. blood thinners correct, correct, correct. and everything so we we look into mm-hmm. that part and then we give them a session of hijama and uh, there is one very interesting thing i'll tell you in most of the t- uh, cases when i get um, like you know a hijama appointment mm. the patients ask how many cups uh, okay yeah. this is this yeah, is yeah. the most common question that yeah. is getting yeah. asked and i want to clarify that a qualified medical doctor sh- will give you the number of cups you know mm. and this is a very big misconception that the more number of cups the, the better more it is. the, the mm-hmm. better it is or the more benefit because you know you are opening when you are opening uh, a hijama channel I am focusing it on the reproductive system. Mm. Now, I also have knee pain. Mm. I also have shoulder pain. If I'm opening too many pathways, the healing gets diluted. Ah, okay, yeah, so yeah, so it is better to focus on the most important issue first and then to move on to the other yeah, supplementary issues. I want to know if you had like a very interesting case in your career where you know you thought like a lot of doctors told the patient that you know it's not possible to heal it is taking time and she did come to you and how did your expertise of ayurveda and cupping help her is there any interesting case that you want to share with us okay so uh, there are many but uh, a quick case that i will share is there was a, a woman who mm. came to me uh, almost 37 years mm. old she had when i took her history i was shocked she had an ectopic pregnancy means mm. uh, the preg- pregnancy had happened in her tube okay. so they removed her tube mm. and when they were removing her tube one side they also realized that she has cyst in the other, other ovary side. other mm. side so they did, did the drilling drilling oh for God. the cyst so they she had an ovarian drilling mm. one tube is absent she had failed five cycles of ivf okay then she was taking a treatment from a doctor, a gynae. It's and actually sadly, giving me chills. As yeah, a woman sadly, it's scary. she took, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a treatment called IUI. Hmm. So she took a couple of sessions of that. Hmm. There, uh, she was taking also in certain cycles, she was taking induction. Induction means uh, they actually give you medicines like Clomid and everything to actually um, help you ovulate. Okay? Induce. Induce ah. ovulation. Hmm. Now, she had taken 17 continuous inductions so for 17 months. Oh, God. And I was like, but doesn't your doctor check you that your one side tube is not, um, it's absent. Mm. So there is no need to take Induce. induction if you are going to ovulate on that side. Why, why is it continuous? She said, I don't know, doctor. And she was very um, sad also because she's like, each time mm. the, the effort failed, Hmm. she's like the nurses that also and the doctor causes yeah. A mental trauma yeah mental hmm. trauma imagine the amount of hormones and the chemicals yeah. she's been because taking because you always have mood swings years. even just like yeah. when you're pmsing you have mood swings she she was she she this girl is an absolute darling like she was so calm she was so peaceful yeah. she was so she had so much faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she was so connected hmm. that she's uh, she's like you know I just want to try and I know it, the yeah. the outcome is in the hands of Allah and then you know I have her husband hmm. sitting next to her and uh, I said you know I'll just examine her and I'll come she went I took her to the other room Correct. by the time she dress up and comes back the husband is sitting in front of me and he's like doctor agar uh, you know nahi bhi hua hmm. to it's okay but don't go make her go through more pain yeah imagine what she's gone through and of course. i was in awe like at least you know this person supports her definitely death. it is much very you know important. because otherwise most of the time the Nine. patients come they have stress related to husband 
कि वो मुझे यू नो रियली रेशमा मेरा नहीं डॉक्टर ये कब तक हो जाएगा नहीं होगा तो वो दूसरी शादी कर लेंगे माई इन लॉज आर स्ट्रेसिंग सो मच एंड यू नो Nice. there are a lot of uh, sad stories but i'm glad that things are also changing yes 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 and i was so uh, so like uh, you know impressed with her yeah, husband yeah, the way he, sure. he said it he is like don't tell i don't want to tell in front of her mm-hmm. but please doctor this don't. way and we treated and she when she came to me because of all this treatment she had very big fibroids वाई mm. सेंटीमीटर in her uterus she said i want to go conservative mujhe ab surgery nahi chahiye mm. we treated her for almost one and a half year mm. and she conceived alhamdulillah but she miscarried uh, mm. because that was covid time so she yeah. miscarried within 2 3 months again after 6 months mm. again she tried and um, she conceived and Mashallah. we have a healthy baby boy now mashallah mashallah yes yes sir. so that was yeah. that is you know something that uh, re uh, that is something that yeah, keeps you motivated as well your faith in this kind of uh, treatment yeah. yes yes and th- that's why you want to work a lot more with women's health yes i know yeah. because you know women uh, should know their options hmm awareness is very important True. that is the most important But you know step. doctor as you said right now that she went to multiple doctors she did a lot of things problem is i don't know as a patient what is right absolutely and and you know for me doctor is there and yes. i don't have 1% of knowledge as doctor has now if you tell me reshma drink this i will believe in you mm. okay if you give me this medicine i will do that so as a patient i'm always lost who to believe because i know there are cases that are going to happen it's very difficult to trust doctors also sometimes i know i know but as now we are we are growing and we have a lot of uh, knowledge information knowledge, online information actually mm. you know it is very important to do your homework. own research yes Correct. you know just don't blindly trust anyone mm. because uh, you know each each doctor has a different approach for oh. her for her case i would tell you after she got pregnant uh, at that time she was in pakistan and when mm. she came back and you know we were very happy about Correct. when she saw the first gynae mm. okay that gynae demotivated her like an oh with fibroid you got pregnant you will uh, you will no. miscarry and this and that and why don't you go, go back to your home country it's easier because here it will be very expensive and this lady is like did That's i ask I you about the expenses you know please help me with no. and then she goes it's like going to a beauty parlor ye bhi kara lo ye bhi kara lo tum ye bhi hoge tum ye bhi hoge na 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 and then she goes to the other gynae ha huh. and she is as much supportive yeah yeah, yeah See, so yeah. It, and she delivered a healthy yeah. uh, like it's you like know, matching baby. your vibe with the doctor if you feel comfortable on yes, yes yes yeah. yes yes so, so there's like pcos and thyroid and infertility tell me the relation of this three okay. and like what is your thoughts and approach towards this so pcos again this condition is uh, based on hormonal imbalance Correct. okay and there is a very close correlation between thyroid and pcos hmm. because again the hormones they overlap each other it's one body hmm. you know so the hormones overlap each other it's very common that you found find uh, uh, it's very common that you find thyroid and pcos in one person and infertility for pcos we usually call it subfertility, subfertility. because it's not infertility in the first place mm. it's basically happening because your ovulation is not happening right correct okay so the the hero here is the ovulation okay now thyroid also has an impact on the egg health mm. your vitamin d levels also have the impact on the egg health your hormones your insulin resistance all this will have impact on the egg health. egg health so what i have seen in my practice you correct this imbalance mm. you correct the imbalance in the metabolism you correct this imbalance imbalance and the conditions reverse itself okay mm. so it is uh, But like any kind of infertility reverses not any kind mm. not any kind because infertility has many reasons mm. but uh, today in today's practice infertility due to the egg health mm. or ovulatory disorders mm. is the most common i would say mm. almost 60% of cases have this mm. otherwise there are there are cases where uh, you know the tubes are blocked now i if the tubes are blocked it cannot be uh, da- uh, like you know treated naturally we always need uh, other assisted mm-hmm. uh, ways of reproduction so there is a limit but most of the cases can be 
ट्रीटेड इन दिस वे यस scientifically hmm. what age do you think is optimum for a woman to get pregnant if she doesn't want to get pregnant in her late 20s uh, so so as you is as it like we, when i grow older there are less chances of being pregnant and yes so reshma as women we hmm. are born with set number of eggs, eggs. in our ovaries Correct. we know that like mm. you know when we are born we have that mm. and as we start our menarche and this mm. every month there is one egg is uh, you know uh, matured Mature. and if that is not fertilized it uh, turns Periods into happen. a period mm. right now as we grow mm. the number of that reserve we call it ovarian reserve that mm. decreases mm. okay earlier the women were able to reproduce up till the age of 50s also Correct. right uh, i would say if you are menstruating mm. if your periods are normal you always have a possibility that you True. will conceive but the ovarian reserve depletes also the quality of the egg hmm also it is getting depleted so i and what happens is because of that now in the society we see lot of disorders in the young children mm. also like autism and other disorders because you know we we usually delay pregnancy uh, pregnancy and, and everything so i would say that yeah everybody's situation is different mm. and everybody but the best thing would be to you know at least uh, start your uh, fertility journey by 30s you know mm. don't delay it much in the late 30s and all because after that you know there are other uh, conditions that True. can be seen in the child and you don't want to deal yeah. with that yeah. yeah doctor it's been very intense <laughs> now you know the thing is i want to know about glowing skin with hijama i've seen lot of these beauty bloggers doing hijama for their face and hair yes. what are your thoughts on it okay so there is something called facial cupping correct in facial cupping you are actually improving the blood, blood circulation, circulation on the skin mm -hmm. okay but it has to be done with the skilled hands okay mm -hmm. what you are doing like a diy routine is fine what you are doing at home mm -hmm. uh, you know but if you are doing a facial cupping mm -hmm. at a clinic it has to be done with the properly skilled hands mm -hmm. because there is we are actually with the cupping we are also working on the lymphatic drainage oh, on your so where you have to drain should be known oh, to you yes. and that lymphatic drainage helps to um, improve the skin collagen mm. improve the skin elasticity uh, mm. it actually gives firming to your more firm mm. and more um, uh, you know contoured look to your yeah. face yes chiseled face yes 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 <laughs> yeah. and uh, for hair again we have certain points mm. in the neck and the head that we do for the hair growth but ha but i always look into the root cause mm. for hair fall or if there is acne for mm. skin or that you have to first start cupping from the root cause correct, to correct. Uh, to correct the root cause and correct. then of course uh, there are certain points to improve blood mm. circulation to yeah. the that area so yeah. but uh, cupping has very beautiful results with skin yeah. and hair care yeah. yes you know honestly i am really close to cupping as well and i really enjoy the process and i know the difference but i'm also glad that the world is getting educated about yes, it yes yes um lot of people didn't take chance as much as much as like last 2 3 years lot mm -hmm. of people have started to do that and you know one thing before we end the podcast i know you're launching a product okay yes. and i'm super excited about it do you want to share some information about the product Okay so uh for my product my harmony even yes. I am very excited yes i know um, you've been working on it for a very long time yes yes you're yes. figuring yes, out a lot of things more than more than 4 to 5 years yes, we've been yes. working what uh, exactly it is okay so when i when i am practicing this over the years like 18 years and all i see that there is a very uh, big gap hmm. in the market because the patients come to me now when i'm working on hormonal health it is very important for them to have a, a solution that is sustainable mm. like they can do it over a longer period Correct. of time you know it mm. is not just like an infection that you take for 5 days antibiotic and it cures no mm. this is something the condition you need to reverse so you have to have it for a longer period of time mm. but as an ayurvedic do doctor um i when i give them three or four formulas that mm. they have to take throughout the day plus i also always look into the deficiencies so mm. we give them more more deficiency ke liye ah. ek do supplement or yeah. do vitamin d and sometimes some other multivitamins and the patients are uh, 
आई फील लाइक दे गेट ओवरवेल क्योंकि यू नो द लाइफ स्टाइल इज बिजी समटाइम्स द गर्ल्स आर यंग दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो इन टू टू मैनी थिंग सो वी वॉन्टेड टू डेवलप अ फॉर्मूला दैट इज अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव प्रोडक्ट समथिंग दैट दे कैन टेक वंस अ डे एंड दैट विल हेल्प दैम टू लाइक यू नो टू लाइक सस्टेनेबली इम्प्रूव देयर कंडीशन so we we we've done my harmony yes. um this product uh, is uh, like a like a comprehensive product hmm. it contains herbs like very important herbs for female health hmm. shatavari um ashoka hmm. garcinia aloe vera these hmm. are the very important herbs for female health we've put we put nutrition hmm. to improve the gut balance hmm. like ginger like a subgol hmm. raspberry leaf so all that and we have put vitamins and minerals mm. vitamin d as i said is very important magnesium chromium mm. from women health and the most important um, supplement myo inositol mm. it it really helps insulin resistance so we put all this in one product yeah. we made it in the form of sachet yeah that you can take one sachet daily in the morning yeah and that's it 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 actually covers you for your yeah. hormonal when is it launching june Uh, probably we yeah, will be joining yes i am excited and yes. uh, yeah i really I, wish I, you all the best thank and you i hope so people much. get aware about it a lot you. thank you so and, much reshma uh, thank you so much doctor for coming to the fat kid show and it was a great conversation i got to know a lot of things i Absolutely. asked a lot of questions i too enjoyed the conversation and yeah, it was easy going i hope yes. i really hope you had fun talking as yeah well. yeah yeah absolutely reshma absolutely thank, thank you so you much so for much. having me over <laughs> थैंक यू आई होप यू गाइज एन्जॉयड इट मुझे काफ़ी ज़्यादा इंसाइट मिली और काफ़ी ज़्यादा रियलिटी चेक मिला इन जनरल सो आई होप यू एन्जॉय दिस पॉडकास्ट डो नॉट फॉर गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल लीव अ कॉमेंट डाउन बिलो इफ़ यू हैव एनी अदर क्वेश्चन एंड आई विल आस्क काइंडली डॉक्टर तहसीन टू प्लीज़ रिप्लाई टू द कॉमेंट्स एंड सॉल्व इट एंड आई विल ऑल्सो लीव डॉक्टर तहसीन क्लिनिक इन्फॉर्मेशन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स डाउन बिलो Do not forget to follow me or leave a star on Spotify and Apple Podcast and I see you next time with another guest. Bye.